Should we buy or sell gold? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and commenting. Here we have gold. Uh, I am yet to review this one uh, from the 6th of November. But when I looked at gold now, I just had to make a new video. So we will look here at the gold futures. However, this anal analysis is definitively just as relevant for the GLD. Uh, it's just that I like to look at the futures because you get more data. It trades more hours. So here is gold. The gold futures, uh, we have seen a very strong rally, but now we have pulled back to a very key support level, uh, this 10-week moving average. On the dailies, the green 50 day is right below us. Uh, the green 50 day was uh, uh, such a huge uh, deal back uh, here. Let me uh, go it in as uh, resistance. So it's definitively a moving average to to have on your radar. The expectation is that the bulls will try to use it as a support level. They also have horizontal support levels, as you can see here with this red dotted line. Uh, so this is just uh, a good a good opportunity. The pullback came from an unexpected level here on RSI weeklies. Uh, if you go here to the dailies, uh, there could be a bit more downside. We aren't at like screaming buy levels on RSI or the PPOs, but we are at the reduced levels uh, where we expect the bulls to make some kind of move. Let me write 5 DMA so or a bit of a, a bit of a question mark because we are not there yet. So let me go give the bulls a four here on the technicals. Uh, let's look here at the seasonality. To the left here, it is pretty bullish though. Uh, the last five years in green, ten years in red, seven years in blue. Overall, the seasonality is bullish. To the right, three point five percent loss so far for February. That is one of the worse uh, months uh, for uh, over across the Februarys going back here to 2004. So it could be that you know, the bad uh, news of February are now priced in. And March, uh, the next month, usually is a bit bearish for gold, but not like roaringly bearish. So it's a, it's, it's a bit of an interesting setup. I give the bears a minus one here on a seasonality. Uh, on the fundamentals, um, I will give the bulls uh, a decent five. So let's look at relative performance. Uh, the long-term correlation with S&P 500 is 30% positive. Uh, it's 99% with the GLD ETF, which is almost perfect. 78% uh, positive with the GDX, the gold miners, looking at the daily data points. 53% with S&P 500. Perfect positive correlation with the GLD. So they do. The GLD is a very good way to get exposure to gold. A ninety-three percent positive correlation with the GDX. Uh, so um, the strongest correlation we do get is with the GDX, and the GDX, the gold miners, is a way to get sort of like turbo exposure to gold. Looking at the red dotted line here, we have approached a bit of a support uh, level here on the horizontals. Uh, so this is, it's a place of interest. On the dailies, we don't really have, um, I mean, we do have horizontal support, but I, I would ideally like, ideally like to also see some moving average uh, support. RSI uh, on the PPOs, on the weeklies, and the dailies are, they're not in like screaming by territory, but places where the bulls have a bit of a tendency to buy, so it's a bit, a bit messy. Uh, to the left here, you do see that GDX, uh, the seasonality is pretty decent. Uh, February, so far, it's it's been a bad month for GDX. March, also, it's looking at the, the, the summer, it usually is bearish. But looking back here to 2016, uh, March has flipped, though, to become more of a green month. Uh, yeah, so, th so th that could be on the horizon. Uh, so let's now compare uh, gold with the GDX. Like uh, that. GDX. Okay, um, on the weeklies here. It's a bit 
it's a bit messy. It is. Uh, um, there's been some times where the current, the, well, the recent low on RSI in this pair led to a period of uh, gold outperforming GTX. On the dailies, we have entered a bit of out, a period of outperformance. But uh, it's a bit noisy. Now looking at the seasonality here to the left, it definitively favors gold over GTX. Looking here to the right in the table view, uh, for February we have the 6.5% outperformance from gold. Uh, looking at the sum, uh, March usually also is a month where gold outperforms. However, going back here to 2015, yeah, we do see that uh, it's usually been more red for gold in this pair. Uh, and when it's been bad for, for for gold, it's usually been rather bad. But when it's been good, it's been super good, like in 2020. So overall, the data here favors gold uh, in the pair. So it's likely that gold will outperform uh, GDX. Uh, okay, so we end up with three in favor of the bulls. We are looking very closely at 50 daily moving average uh, support with a bit of a question mark. But gold has pulled back uh, from high levels, uh, and the overall, you know, macro situation should be favorable to gold. There's a lot of uncertainty, um, geopolitically, of course, but also when it comes to the financial system. It's under a lot of uh, strange uh, pressure, uh, and those situations historically have been favorable to gold. So we do have time left. Let's look at some stocks and other types of security that I find interesting. Uh, let's look at Netflix. It's been some time since I looked at Netflix. These are the weekly data points. It's pulled back to a horizontal support level. Um, it's been on a run though. Yeah. yeah, maybe if technically here it's not that interesting. Yeah. Let's con yeah. Let's continue a bit here. I do prefer to have a clean technical signal, uh, because I do think that the technicals are number one, and then the other things can corroborate what you find on the technicals. But while we are on the topic of streaming uh, companies, let's look at Disney. Horizontal support. Support from the twenty day moving average. Uh, Seasonality here to the left, favorable to the right. Yeah, March recently though has been a very red month. That's a bit of an issue for Disney. Uh, price to sales is very low, also price book. Uh, let's look here at the analyst price uh, targets. Uh, the forecasts are um, oh, mixed though, a bit too mixed. But overall, they do have a strong buy. 17% average upside. Yeah. Disney is looking interesting, but not like not like super exciting. What about Curiosity Stream? Yeah, it's been on a run, it's now pulling back. But it hasn't pulled back yet to in any kind of support level. What about Tesla? Yeah, it's been on a run, but that means that the great buying opportunity sort of passed. I mean, is it a shorting opportunity? Yeah, it got a bit overbought. The previous time it got into this territory was back here. Then it was pretty shortable. Also back here, it was also pretty shortable. Yes, yeah, so maybe maybe Tesla is a bit of a short. Let's explore that a bit further. The seasonality here to the left is definitively not favorable of shorts. Yeah, so far we have a 13% gain for February, which is the one of the best Februarys so far. That also means that the odds of more gains is limited. March, it's a messy month. It can be bullish or very bearish. Overall, it usually is bullish, but it's it's messy for sure. Looking at price book, we are. I mean, you could argue we are emerging here from a. Let me draw it in. This is like a double bottom on price book. 
Uh, also, price to sales, uh, similar setup. Let's look here at the price uh, targets. Um, average, oh, it's a bit below us. Mm. But this is not really a stock favored by fundamental an analysis, but yeah, I mean, it's, the stock has been on a run, so maybe the great buying opportunity sort of passed. Uh, on the topic of uh, moving from A to B, what is happening with Virgin Galactic? Mm, it pulled back a bit, yeah, but that could be a buying opportunity. Let's look at the dailies. Um, maybe horizontal support, and also the blue 100 day moving average and the green 50 day could offer some support. So how far, how much further down would that be? Yeah, approaching five percent. So a bit of a, a bit of a wider stop. Yeah, February been bad so far, but looking at the sum, it usually is a decent month. But we have very little data. March is one of the worst months. That's not bullish. Very low on price book. Well, relatively speaking, that is. Well, and also the other metrics. Um, yeah. Analysts are not super bullish here on the upside for Virgin Galactic. Let's uh, look at uh, traveling on the sea then with Norwegian Cruise Line Holdings. Mm. Yeah, let's look at the dailies. Not like a great signal, well, interesting signal really on the weeklies. On the dailies, it's a bit messy. Let's look at Carnival, Carnival Cruises, Carnival Corporation. Uh, resistance from the green 50 week moving average, which is bearish. We have recently broken out above the 200 daily moving average, potentially finding support on the 20 day. Um, seasonality is really good though, from the 14th of February here to the left, usually pretty bullish. But March, looking in the table view, it's messy. Rather messy month indeed. Uh, price book is pretty high. Um, it's at a resistance, uh, one could uh, say. The analyst price targets, yeah, to the downside. Okay. But what if we were to travel by train, Union Pacific? Uh, corporation weekly. Oh, interesting. Maybe that's the option. Two hundred week moving average support in red on the dailies. Yeah, messy though. Blue one hundred daily moving average resistance. Also two hundred daily moving average resistance further above us. Yeah, what about the seasonality? Yeah, decent seasonality here to the left. February usually is a bullish month. Zero point seventy four percent gain so far. March is one of the better months, but it's been a bit more mixed recently. Back in the day here, it was very nice and green. It's, it's a bit of a mixed month. Price book at support, price to sales also at more bigger, longer term support. Same thing with price earnings. So fundamentals here are looking decent. 2.5% um, yield. Um, average price target is 8% above us, highest is 19% above, lowest is 13% below. Analysts are overall bullish. Okay, so we have looked at gold, and when you have gold, you might also think about ways to transport your gold. Now, the good thing about gold uh, versus silver is that you can have a lot more value um, in a easier to travel uh, weight uh, range. Now, a lot of people, they prefer to invest in silver, physical silver, because it's you get more heft, you know, you get bigger bars for the same price. But the major, you know, benefit with gold is that you can have a lot of value in a small confined space. So if you were to uh, get into a situation where you need to, you need to just leave fast, then the amount of value you can travel in gold is way more than silver. So yeah. If you are going to, going to transport your gold, it seems like the railway system is the best option now. Uh, we did look at uh, Union Pacific. Very interesting setup there. 
Um, so yeah, maybe turning bullish on gold and Union Pacific. <laughs>